Now I know my last video was a tad echoey, that's why I have my mic closer to me now. As many of y'all know, I'm in my new office, a lot of hard surfaces, not a lot of stuff on the walls, so naturally it's an echoey room. Now that the mic in the room is addressed, not too long ago, we talked about learning code faster using the Feynman technique. But what good is learning the Feynman technique if you're not going to use the Feynman technique? And I'm not just talking about simply not using it. What I'm really talking about is procrastination. That brings me to this video. This video is all about the one trick that I use to prevent procrastination, to increase productivity, to allow myself to code faster, to code better, to be more efficient, and not just coding, but life as a whole and that is microtasking. Now what is microtasking? Microtasking is something that I've talked about on the channel time and time again. I just never called it microtasking. It's basically when you take a big problem and you break that big problem down into smaller problems. You take those smaller problems and break those down into even smaller problems and you keep on going until you have problems or tasks, microtasks, that are actually digestible and that don't prevent you from starting on those tasks. If you are too scared because there's a task ask or a problem that is a bit daunting and you think it'll take three hours, well, see what you can do to shrink that down into a 30 minute task. I mean, let's face it, it's much easier to get started while staring down a 30 minute task than it is when you know you have a six hour task in front of you. It'll also allow you to be more productive. Instead of trying to figure out all these different problems within that six hour task, you just have X amount of a 30 minute task and when you focus on one problem at a time, you're able to be more efficient. You're able to find a better solution for that particular problem and then you're able to move on to the next. Plus, you'll be more productive because you won't be procrastinating due to a daunting task in front of you. That's why I always say if you're looking for like motivation to get coding, you know, you come home from work or from school or you wake up and you just... You just don't have that motivation to go sit down on your computer and, and start typing code. Just go in expecting to code for 15 minutes. That's it. 15 minutes and then you're done. You can walk away, you can feel accomplished, what have you. More than likely, you're going to be looking up at the clock three hours from now, trying to figure out where in the world that time went because you got into the groove of things. Once you actually sat down and started working, you realize this is something that you actually like to do. It may be daunting because you're going to be using all this mental power to solve problems, what have you, but this is something that you actually like to do. I mean, I like to go work out. It doesn't mean it's always easy to hop in the car, drive all the way to the gym and start working out. But once I'm actually in the groove of things, lifting weights or running or whatever the heck I, I do whenever I go to the gym, which hasn't been recently, I actually get into the groove of things and I enjoy myself. I enjoy it when I'm actually there, just like you enjoy sitting in front of the computer and coding. So just sit, just 15 minutes, that's all, you're done. I think you'll be surprised. Now, instead of talking hypothetical, let's take a real world example and implement microtasking. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop into the computer here. We're gonna look at this old website that I kind of put together and all honesty, it's a web template that I just filled out, like a little resume portfolio thing from when I thought I was going to be an iOS freelancer. All right, I'm double mic'd up here. Let's see what we can do. Like I said, I'm trying to reduce the echo by just keeping the mic close to me for the time being. All right, so the main objective is to create a resume portfolio website. That is where we start and we need to branch out from there. Now, what do we have within that resume portfolio website? Well, if we're taking this as our example, we have a homepage and we can have a little website tour as we go over this. So homepage, hi, I'm Forest Knight, iOS developer and designer, Virginia Beach works as a freelancer. You know, I thought that was pretty good. Then we have a resume section. So this is where all of the education work experience would be located. We have our skills section, which in all honesty, I was always confused about this these sections. It's like, I don't know what 85% Swift code skills means, but I mean, it kind of looks cool, I suppose. Portfolio. This is where you will show off your weather app for iOS, your Pokefinder iOS, and then put your photos back there behind it that I never did, and then your contact section. All right, everything seems fairly straightforward, but there's still quite a few elements within each section. Let's take the resume section, for example, for the sake of this video, this is the only one we're going to fully brainstorm out. So from top to bottom, we have a title, we have a line here to make it look nice, we have a button to download my resume, we have a button that that's get in touch, that'll take us over to our contact form. 
We have our title for education. We have a few little widgets displaying the information for education, which is officially outdated because I am no longer a student there. And then we have our work experience down here. And what we just did in theory, you'll do for every section. For skills, you have to figure out exactly what you want to la label in there, not the actual skills, but do you want code skills? widget, do you want software skills widget, professional skills widget for portfolio, display a photo in the background, you wanna have titles, you wanna have a little description right there separated by a line. Those are all the decisions that you will have to make if you're creating your own little web page or your own application because you are the designer, you're the developer, you are everything that has to do with that application so you need to figure all that out. Now you have to figure out what you wanna do first. For a simple web page like this, I think it's reasonable to just start at the top and go through each section until you're done with the app. So up here, you start filling out all of the tasks within this section or this user story as you would call it. You go down to the resume, you go down to the skills until you're finished with the app. And sure, all of this is easier said than done. I understand that, but that's, that's kind of the point of making the video. I don't want everything to sound so difficult. I want everything to sound easy, that way you can implement this within your own life, not just coding problems. I know, I, I of course, I focus a lot of my content on coding problems, like with the Feynman technique, how to learn code faster with the Feynman technique. That's something that you can use in any aspect of your life. Microtasking is something else you can use in any aspect of your life. Now what I'm gonna do now, besides put on my glasses real quick, we're gonna take these post-it notes. I'm a very visual learner. I, I like to have things laid out right in front of me to get a better understanding. And I think that'll help you all as well. So we're going to essentially brainstorm everything we just talked about in, uh, in order for a little recap. All right, we're gonna start microtasking. We're gonna start off with our big problem and that is the resume portfolio website. We've broken those down into five sections. That is the home, resume, skills, portfolio, and contact section. And what we've done is honed in on one for the sake of this video and that is the resume portfolio. Portion. For the resume portion, we have the section title, the download button, the get in touch button, title, and widgets. Now that we have everything laid out and brainstormed, we are running into one problem. It's the fact that I like to take my stuff everywhere I go because if I'm out and about and I come up with a better idea, I want to be able to add it into the applicable area or if I want to change something around or edit or what have you. And that is where the Post-it app for Android comes in. Before we get into it, I want to thank Post-it Brand for sponsoring this video. Y'all know if I didn't believe in something, I wouldn't have it sponsored on the channel. Post, I mean, it's Post-it Brand. Post-it Brand, Post-it Notes, their Post-it app for Android just being released right now. So go on the Google Play Store and get it. But let me show you a little bit more to make sure you're interested. So what you're able to do instead of just taking a picture is once you have everything laid out on your desk, you can go into the Post-it app for Android and take a picture within the app. What this does, it identifies every Post-it note that is within frame and it saves that into its own personal board. And within this board, you can leave them as is or you can format them in a few different ways. You're able to edit the Post-it note. You're able to delete post-it notes or if you want to add a new post-it note you can do that as well and there are many different features within this application that you can use including the ability to have multiple boards together where if you wanted to have each section separate from each other so it's a little bit more organized within the application you can do that too so if you're anyone like me or basically anybody else I know and you use post-it notes I would highly recommend checking out the post-it app for Android speaking of people who use post-it notes I swear my tech lead at work he has had the same 14 post-it notes stuck all over his monitors and desk for the past year. And that's it. That is the one trick I use that has helped me so, so much. Microtasking. So get off this video after you give it a like and you subscribe so you get more videos. Sit down at your desk and start working. Or sit down at your computer and grab your post-it notes and start breaking down those big tasks into smaller tasks and those smaller tasks into even smaller ones. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. Later.